Welcome to another installment of Fighting for the Faith. My name is Chris Roseboro. I am your servant in Jesus Christ. This is the channel that compares what people are saying in the name of God to the Word of God. So this is going to be a different kind of episode, and it kind of needs to be. Um, I was uh, searching through social media and uh, digging for my heresy that I have to hunt in order to, uh, you know, to to work out episodes of Fighting for the Faith here. And across my YouTube feed came a recommended video, uh, one that I did not want to pass by, and it claimed that it was from a former member of Catherine Crick's church who was speaking out. And so we're going to be listening to a portion of this video, and here's the reason why. I want people to know that this video exists, and uh, even if this fellow ends up taking it down later, I want this to be able to be a resource for people to go to, because here's the thing. Uh, based on what I'm seeing here, we can legitimately say that some people are starting to see that Catherine Crick is not a true apostle of Jesus Christ. And the things that he he brings up in his video, they need to be shared because they validate some of the criticisms and observations that myself and others have been making about Catherine, especially when it relates to the fact that it seems very cult-like. Um, and at the same time, um, her claims don't seem to have validation. And I've even noted that she's used the same crisis actors uh, to cast demons out of them uh, that have shown up in other channels. So uh, this guy notes some of those things that validate previous criticisms that have been made about Catherine Crick. And the reason he put the video out is because he can see the truth about her. She's not a true apostle. This woman is a dangerous woman. And so uh, I'm trying to, if you would, take what he's done. We'll take a look at a little bit of it and amplify it. And so that uh, it can reach a wider audience because Catherine Crick is a dangerous, and I mean legitimately dangerous woman. I haven't seen a leader like her uh, in my lifetime except for Jim Jones, and that was long before I was even trained theologically. That's what we're talking about. She, this is cult level, level status uh, with this woman, and she is dangerous. She's not truly delivering anyone. She's not truly healing anyone. She's in it for the money, and she cares cares nothing about the people she serves. Uh, you'll, you'll see that in the video. So let's whirl up the desktop. And uh, we are going to, uh, th this is a video put out by a fellow by the name of Matt Brown. He only has 140 subscribers. And, uh, and the name of the video is Catherine Crick Exposed, Former Church Member Speaks Out. And so what we'll do is we're going to listen to him. We'll uh, interact with the scripture along the way, but you need to hear what he's saying. This is a guy who's been a part of her ministry since like during the COVID days, at least attending her services in the park and things like that. And um, and I'm not endorsing this guy's theology. I, I clearly will have issues with his theology. I want to focus instead on not where he's wrong, but where he legitimately is pointing out correctly the problems regarding Catherine. And this is eyewitness testimony of a guy who's uh, quite, you know, has attended her services, uh, you know, for quite a while. So here we go. Here's Matt Brown. So this is my video about Catherine Crick. Uh, I know there's a lot of other videos that are like Catherine Crick exposed. Um, there's some great information out there. I'm grateful to the work that these men and women are doing exposing, uh, exposing what's going on with Catherine Crick. Um, but this is my story as someone that went to her church, uh, for a good period of time. So early 2022, maybe end of 2021, I come across something on Instagram talking about revival in the park and everything about that sounded good to me. I'm like, revival, yes, in the park, different. Yes, I like that, we're outside. So January, I go to, they were meeting in a park near Griffith Park in LA, um, Los Angeles. Now I wanna make something clear. There's a reason why I'm starting here because I want you to hear his credentials. This is not, this is not somebody who's criticizing her from a distance, which unfortunately I have to do. Now, granted, I have access to the full archives of her teachings and the things she's doing that are available on her YouTube channel. 
And that is sufficient for providing a theological uh, critique and a biblical evaluation and criticism of her false teaching and false practices. That you know, you, know, you just need to see what's what's taking place. But this fellow has the the experiences that I have not had. He's been there. He's been there before the service starts. Been able to interact with the people who were there. Uh, he's able to see nuanced things that are don't show up on camera. So uh, I think his testimony is super important. So I, I want to make that clear. We move on. Uh, right outside the Gene Autry, I think Gene Autry Museum was the first meeting I went to. And I wasn't going as a skeptic. I, didn't, I hadn't seen any exposed videos. I hadn't seen her defending herself a lot. I had just seen that there was a bunch of people meeting out in the park that are talking about Jesus and worshiping him. And that appealed to me. So I, I go for that, that and that alone. And so I worship with the people. And I'm hanging out, and then they do prayer at the end for quite a while. And, I mean, just Catherine's praying for people. Uh, and anyway, I, I'm, I'm there for that service, and I'm like, okay, cool. I'll come back next week. I leave before it's totally over. And the next week I see online that on Instagram, okay, they're meeting. They're switching parks. They're going to a new, new location. Cool. They're a mobile church. Okay, let's go to the new location. So I go to Elysian Park in L.A., which is – near Dodger Stadium. It's mm -hmm. just a park that's around the stadium. So I go to Elysian Park and, you know, six total times from January to February, I go to her meetings. The last one I had went to was February 22nd, 2022. Took a huge break and then went back in 2023 for a little while. And no, started just noticing strange things in the next few meetings. I noticed that after the service, she would be escorted, people surround, like her team surrounding her, away from the people like she's some celebrity or something, just completely surrounding her, escorting her away. And I was just like, hmm, Jesus, a man of the people, real preachers available to the people. We're a small group of people, maybe a couple hundred max, 150, I don't know, maybe 100, to be honest. A hundred people in the park, and she has a security entourage that surrounds her and escorts her out. Why? I'll, I'll tell you why. So that she doesn't have to interact with anybody. That's the reason why. They're there to protect her from, you know, the awkward question, the person who might, you know, ask something that could then cause the entire facade to come down. She is the untouchable. She is the apostle. She is the woman of God, right? And so this behavior is absolutely out of bounds. There's no pastor should be doing this. Honest. And I'm just like... This is weird. I'm, I, when I noticed that, I noticed that she would leave that way a few times, and I'm like, I don't like that. That seems, it just bothered me right away. I'm mm -hmm. like, it's, this isn't cool. This seems like, who does she think she is, and what's, why all the protection against anybody having access to her? Because mm -hmm. well, they don't. Want, <laughs> she doesn't want to have to ask answer anyone's questions. Well, that started to develop over time of why. So I'm just noticing these things, and then in her meetings. Uh, she was talking about sowing for deliverance, of sow extra seed if you need deliverance. And I'm thinking of the verses that Jesus said of free... So sowing extra seed, you want to be delivered? You need to sow seed, you know, give money. Uh-huh. Freely you've given, freely receive. And Simon the sorcerer, who's, who's like, how much do I have to pay to be able to impart the Holy Spirit to people? Mm -hmm. And the apostle told him, I think it was Peter or Paul, I'm going to say Peter told him, may your money perish with you for thinking you could purchase the gift of God. And just all throughout the New Testament, it's very clear... The gifts of God are free. Yep. Jesus came to give us freedom and deliverance. You don't got to pay for it. You can't pay for it. It's not the way to get it. It's free. So yeah, that's right. It's free. So we're going to note here. Um, the, the, the story in question is Acts 14. Let's, let's go ahead and add this into the mix. So uh, other people have noted that Catherine Crick has legitimately asked people yeah, you know, if you want deliverance, if you want to go to the next level or whatever, you're going to have to sow money into my ministry in order to receive a deliverance or a healing or whatever. Yeah, the gifts of God are free. That guy was right. Matt was right. Uh, here's the text in question uh, in Acts chapter 8, verse 14. When the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John who came down and prayed for them so that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for he had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw, this is Simon the sorcerer, that the Spirit was given through the laying on of hands of the apostles, he offered them money 
saying, give me this power also so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, may your silver perish with you because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. And uh, let me throw in another text just for good measure, the book of Galatians chapter 3. Paul writes to the church at, uh, at the churches in Galatia, he says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus was publicly portrayed as crucified. So let me ask you this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish, having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected in the flesh? Uh, did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed if it was in vain? Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and work miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith? And anybody who would say, oh, well, you, in order for you to receive your deliverance, you have to sow money into my ministry, uh, that's... To, that's a that's a work of the law. It's not even biblical law. It's just a complete made up law. Whereas Paul is arguing here that the Spirit operates for free, freely, because the gospel is the good news that Christ has bled and died for our sins and gives us forgiveness, mercy, and eternal salvation free, as a gift. And the Holy Spirit is given as a gift, not by works or by being uh, by p for paying for it. So already this guy's testimony is confirming what myself and others have been warning about Catherine Crick. Um, she is uh, it behaves like a cult leader. This is why we call her cult leader Barbie. And uh, and she's she asks people for money uh, in order to be healed or delivered. So. Let's continue and see what uh, what else Matt has to tell us about his time with Catherine Crick. Time goes by. Actually, before I get to how I went back there again in 2023, um, just at the park, I would notice stuff like these six meetings. These same two girls kept screaming out during every deliverance prayer time. Which same two girls during deliverance prayer time. Same two girls because they're paid actresses. That's a huge part of her uh, format is worship, uh, message, and then I like half the time was spent on praying, deliverance, casting out demons, supposedly mm -hmm. um, casting out demons. I want to say that supposedly, you know, when I say church, I want to say church. Now, no, this is a guy who is on the ground. He attended multiple services, saw multiple deliverances and healings and things like this. And in, after being in attendance, he's not even sure or confident that any of them were even real. And he noticed that the same two women were being delivered week after week. Weird, isn't that? You know, uh-huh. Just, just, just keep that in mind. Because there's some stuff that's just not right. And... Um, some stuff that she has not corrected in her ministry. And like when I gave her the grace, you know, from watching Troy's video. Now he is referring to Troy Black. And, uh, you know, I skipped that part where he talked about it. And let me show you what he's referring to. Two years ago, Troy Black put out a video called God Spoke to Me About Catherine Crick. And this is what he showed me. God isn't talking to Troy Black. If God were to have a direct conversation with Troy Black, I'm convinced he wouldn't survive the ordeal. Uh, it, the, the only thing that God would have to say to him is repent for blaspheming God's holy name and taking it and, and dragging it through the mud and making it worthless and speaking in vain. Because Troy Black is not a prophet. He's a false prophet. We've demonstrated that here on Fighting for the Faith. Go back through the archives of Fighting for the Faith and put in Troy Black and uh, look at what we noticed regarding his prophecy regarding the big snowstorm that was supposed to take place in Anchorage, Alaska in May uh, of that particular year. You know, just th they'll show you this guy is, he's a wingnut wackerdoodle and he's not a true prophet. He's a false prophet. But you'll, you'll note then whatever spirit he's operating on seems to think that Catherine Crick's the real deal. Yeah, listen to this nonsense. In deliverance ministry, you know, that's one of her main, one of the main ways I'm seeing that God is using her right now. And I know there's other ways as well, but uh, obviously there's always going to be, you know, the cessationists that are calling people out, you know, that are getting all mad about what the Holy Spirit is doing, but there's all. Uh, okay. Number one, I'm not a cessationist. Okay. 
I believe the Holy Spirit has worked throughout the entire history of the Christian church. Number two, I believe that God has healed people for the last two millennia and there have been miracles in the church the entire time. So I'm not a cessationist. That's not, that's not a correct way of putting it. Now, do I believe the sign gifts have ceased? Yes. And that there's nobody who operates with a gift of healing or anything like that. That's a whole other thing. But I do believe that miracles still happen today. I've seen miraculous answers to prayers. So you'll note that this, this nonsense that, that the people who call themselves continuationists engage in is designed, to, it's, it's thought-stopping technique. Oh, uh, the cessationists are just mad about what the Holy Spirit is, also, is doing out there. Uh, no, they're not. Um, the, whole, you know, the, the, the point is this. Whatever's going on with Catherine Crick's ministry, whatever spirit's behind it, it ain't the Holy Spirit. It's a demonic spirit at best. So, you know, so it's not the Holy Spirit that's operating. God isn't using her to forward the kingdom of Christ or to preach the gospel or bring people to repentance or deliver them from, de from demons or anything like this. Catherine Crick is a, con it, she's, she's a slug nickel. She's counterfeit. You know, she's as, as real as a bill Clinton $3 bill. It's, the woman is not legit. She's not an apostle. She's not a sister. She's a dangerous, dangerous wolf. And so here's Troy Blackstone. The whole oh, Holy Spirit told me this about Catherine Crick. And he's saying that God's, he said that God's using her. He ain't using her unless it's for judgment. Also, sometimes it bleeds over into, you know, people that are operating the same gift, you know, and, and here I'm just going to be very straightforward because that's what the Spirit's leading me to do. Being jealous being envious and operating from that place. This is what the Lord began to show me uh, as I was getting ready to film this video is that we as believers in Jesus Christ, when God starts to use somebody else, we have an opportunity to get on board with what God is doing or the other choice is to become a Saul in that situation. Oh, I see. So because I haven't gotten on board with the opportunity to back Catherine Crick up, I've become a Saul. Baloney. Uh, Catherine Crick is a false apostle and uh, she's one of the people that Jesus warned us about. Saul was king over Israel. God had anointed Saul. God had called Saul to be king. The prophet Samuel had anointed Saul. You know, and it says that no word that Samuel ever spoke fell to the ground. That means that Samuel was God's essentially perfect prophet, if you could say. No, he was just a prophet. And I love the fact here that Troy kind of choked on that, that God didn't allow any of those words to fall to the ground because Samuel never spoke from from a different spirit than the Holy Spirit. And he was a perfect prophet because all prophets of the Old Testament who were true prophets of God were perfect. They never prophesied falsely, period. Troy Black, his words have fallen to the ground a lot. Okay, we've only documented one particularly egregious case, but many of his words have fallen to the ground. Exactly. So I just find it fascinating that he choked up on that. It's like, oh, he's God's perfect prophet. Uh, no, that was the standard for all prophets, including true prophets of the New Testament. Their words didn't fall to the ground. Say that you know he was he was the best prophet I think in the Old Testament, the closest to God's heart, the closest, uh, the best at hearing God's voice. You know he was he was so in line with God's will. Um, and, and he anointed, he went and he anointed Saul, and yet, and so that means that God was legitimately using Saul for his kingdom purposes, and yet Saul turned away from the Lord, and there's actually, uh, we see a passage where the, the reason Saul turned away from the Lord was because, uh, and it's right where Samuel says, Saul, God's going to strip this kingdom away from you. It's right before that, Saul admits that he listened to the voice of the people instead of listening to what Samuel had said God had said to do. You know, he started listening to the voice of the people. So just because someone is operating, you know, in deliverance ministry, you know, legitimately or in ministry legitimately, maybe they're prophetic, maybe they're a teacher or pastor, you know, an encourager, an evangelist, whatever it is, that does not mean that they cannot get jealous and that they can't get envious and start talking bad about somebody else. That there, there is an, a one ounce of jealousy inside of me as it relates to Catherine Crick. In fact, I have deep, deep concern for all the people she's deceiving. And I consider her to be an evil and wicked woman. There's no jealousy at all because I know what's going to happen to her if she doesn't repent. And she's going to stand in the day of judgment and she's going to have to face Jesus and explain to him all these false deliverances, false miracles, and her fleecing Christ's sheep. Christ isn't going to, is not going to act kindly towards her on the day of judgment if she doesn't repent. So I have zero jealousy when it comes to Catherine Crick. Now, a little bit of a note here. 
we'll take a look at what Peter writes regarding false prophets in 2 Peter chapter 2. This is one of my go-to texts, but it's important that we look at it in this context. Peter prophesied, and this is the last letter he wrote before he was crucified, and it says this, false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. Many will fall Follow their sensuality, and because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle. Their destruction is not asleep. I would note that to Catherine Crick, uh, telling people that they needed so money into her ministry in order to be delivered, is a great example of people who are exploiting others with false words, right? For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a herald of righteousness, with seven others, when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly, if by turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, he condemned them to extinction, making them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if the rest Rescued righteous Lot, greatly distressed by the sensual conduct of the wicked, for as the righteous man lived among them day after day, he was tormenting his righteous soul over their lawless deeds and he, that he saw and heard. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment, especially those who indulge in the lust of defiling passion and despising authority. Bold and willful. These false prophets, they do not tremble as they blaspheme the glorious ones, whereas angels, though greater in might and power, do not pronounce a blasphemous judgment against them before the Lord. But these, these false teachers, like irrational animals, creatures of instinct, born to be caught and destroyed, blaspheming about matters of which they are ignorant, will also be destroyed in their destruction, suffering wrong as the wage for their wrongdoing. They count it pleasure to revel in the daytime, their blots and blemishes, uh, reveling in their deception while they feast with you. They have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sin. They entice unsteady souls. They have hearts trained in greed. They are accursed children, forsaking the right way. They have gone astray. They have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved gain from wrongdoing. Yeah, Balaam, if you read the account of him, he was a prophet for prophet and ultimately was put to death by the Israelites. But he was rebuked for his own transgression. A speechless donkey spoke with him with a human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. These false teachers, they are waterless springs. They are mists driven by a storm. From them, for them, the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved. This is why I do not have any jealousy of Catherine Crick, because this is spoken about her. For speaking loud boasts of folly, they entice by sensual passions of the flesh those who are barely escaping from those who are in error. They promise them freedom. They promise them deliverance, right? But they themselves are slaves to corruption. For whatever comes, outcomes, uh, overcomes a person to that he is enslaved. For if after having escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the last state has become worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them to have not known the way of righteousness than after knowing it to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. What the true prophet has hap- what the true pro- proverb, what the true proverb says has happened to them. The dog returns to its own vomit, and the sow, after washing herself, returns to wallow in the mire. Spoke. These are words spoken about people like Catherine Crick. Let me throw this into the mix because we're going to hear about false miracles here in a minute. Um, prophet, the apostle Paul prophesied regarding the last days, the days we're in right now. It says, the coming of the lawless one, this is the Antichrist, the man of lawlessness. This is by the activity of Satan with all power of false signs and wonders. And and here's my admonition. Okay, people like Troy Black and others defend Catherine Crick. Why? Well, because they come to us 
in, in the name of Pentecostalism and, and, and the charismatic gifts of the Spirit and continuationism. So everything they have to say must be true, and all these manifestations must be true. Otherwise, cessationism is right, and it, this is just not the right way to look at this. Okay, Anybody who comes to you performing miracles or claiming to be performing miracles needs to be tested. And you're going to hear that the miracles that this woman performs, they're not even true. Shock of shocks. Of course, I already knew that. We covered that in one of our earlier episodes regarding Catherine Crick when we showed that she was using crisis actors and d- casting demons out of people who were uh, mysteriously showing up on other deliverance channels. Just, just keep this in mind. But Paul writes that the coming of the lawless one, the precursor to the man of lawlessness is exactly what we're seeing in ministries like Catherine Crick's and others, with all power and false signs and false wonders, and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false in order that all may be con- condemned who did not believe the truth, but instead had pleasure in unrighteousness. Keep that in mind. So what we're going to continue, we're going to go back to listening to Matt then explain. And what comes next is not shocking to me at all. It's validation of the things that I've been warning for years regarding Catherine Crick. Which I don't know that he really heard from God. I don't know. You know, he didn't go. I respect Troy Black, but. He didn't hear from God. I'll help you out there. Troy Black is a false prophet. We've already demonstrated that and documented it. We have the receipts here on this channel. After going to her church, I'm thinking back to his video, thinking there's some stuff he doesn't know. There's some stuff he didn't see. And um, uh, that could be affecting his opinion. So, But he claims that he's hearing from God the Holy Spirit. His opinion, whatever he's speaking... Should be, str- should be straight up in accord with the truth. The reason why it's not is because he's not hearing from the Holy Spirit. I'm just noticing these same two girls always screaming out during deliverance, and it's like, well, why aren't they getting delivered, or why are they getting delivered every single week? Because they're paid actresses. Like, did the demons not listen? Is the authority of Christ not here? What's happening? Mm-hmm. So... And then I would notice that she would pray for people with physical ailments, and they wouldn't get healed. And then she would say, go, it's going to happen as you go. So when she would pray for people with obvious physical ailments, they weren't healed. And then Catherine Crick would say, go, as you are going, you will be healed. Uh Uh-huh. That is so convenient. They never were. And... There's a very seductive, deceptive way mm-hmm. of making people accept what I believe are, are false signs and wonders. And the reason why he thinks that they're false signs and wonders, because he saw them with his own eyes. Um, people were testifying, but I, can't, I cannot say that I legitimately saw somebody get healed there. And I want to. I want. Mm-hmm. He can't say that he saw anyone getting healed there. But he wants to see that. He wanted to see that, but his entire time there, he can't say that he actually saw a legitimate, real healing even once. And he noticed the same two women having demons cast out of them week after week. Uh huh. That means that Catherine Crick knows she's deceiving. Not that she's just deceived, she is intentionally deceiving. Uh, that, that's, that's the best way I can put it. All right, let's listen to this last segment that we, we've uh, prepared for you for this installment of Fighting for the Faith, as Matt Brown tells us a little bit more of his experiences of attending Fivefold Church and, and Catherine Crick's apostolic ministry. But she, you know, then she brings out a book, The Secret of the Anointing and the Keys of the Kingdom, and I just start noticing how her sermons are all about her special anointing. Mm -hmm. Uh, be humble, be humble, be humble. Yes, be humble. But I believe she was using be humble to, to, as a thought stopping device to tell people, don't question me. Don't look into what I'm doing. uh, Just accept whatever I'm saying. Shock of shocks. Catherine Crick preaching about how special she is. Uh Uh-huh. That's a sign of a, of a true false teacher. Let me tell you about what the Apostle Paul preached about. Okay, And, and uh, you're, I, I know you're going to find this shocking, but the Apostle Paul, he didn't preach about himself. Nope, that's not what he did. Okay, 
Paul says this, the word of the cross, that's the message of salvation by grace through faith apart from works. The word of the cross, all because Christ has bled and died for your sins and mine on the cross. It's folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Will thwart. So um, let's, let's kind of go on to the next chapter and you'll see, see what, what comes next. But watch what Paul says. Paul says, and when I came to you, I, brothers, I did not come to you proclaiming the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. I decided to know nothing among you except for Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I, I, I always love when people react negatively against this passage. Well, I'm sure he preached more than just that. No, there is nothing else to preach. <laughs> okay, I've been a pastor for almost 10 years now. I'm, I'm up, in just a few months, I will be a pastor for 10 years. And I can legitimately say... Every single sermon's been about Jesus and him crucified for our sins. Every single one of them. Um, that, yeah, that I preach, well, there's more to the Bible than that. No, there really isn't. The Apostle Paul says, I decided to know nothing among you except for Jesus Christ and him crucified. But what this fellow is describing is that Catherine Crick, who does she preach about? Catherine Crick and her special anointing. And her and, and, and she's, she's um, ba- offering her books for sale and things like this. Hmm, that's not suspect at all. I should say sus. That's totally sus. So let me back this up just a little bit. Listen again. I believe she was using Be Humble to, to, as a thought-stopping device to mm-hmm. tell people, don't question me, don't look into what I'm doing, or just accept whatever I'm saying. And it's like, well, as I'm reading the Bible, I can see all over the New Testament, specifically Paul, the great apostle, the humble apostle, you know, that is saying, I take no honor to myself. Test, there's going to be wolves. Test them. Test them with the word. Be diligent. Study the word and show yourself approved. Make sure it lines up with the word of God. Many wolves are going to come in the end times. Many wolves coming for sordid gain have already come to you now, preaching a false Christ. And so I just noticed all this scripture twisting. Yep. Uh, so he knows uh, squi- scripture twisting, thought stopping devices, and she preaches about her anointing and how special she is. Stopping devices. And, you know, so end of July, really first Sunday in August of 2023. I feel very clearly, I need to not go to this church for a while. I need to take... <laughs> and up to stop going altogether and put this video out. Interesting, right? Uh, th- this is what we call important eyewitness testimony, which validates the criticisms that we've been making and others have been making about Catherine Crick. This is a dangerous woman. And if you know anybody who's attending her five-fold church uh, in Los Angeles... You need to you need to get into these people's faces and you need to warn them. This woman is dangerous and how fivefold church will end will be horrible. Absolutely horrible. There will not be a good ending here. And Catherine Crick is not a sister. She's a wolf. Full on. She's she fits all the descriptors of what it is that we're told to look out for in, in the scriptures and that Christ himself had warned us about. So, Matt, thank you for your video. I appreciate that, and I'm trying to help get it out to a wider audience so that more people can see it and uh, and hear your warning. So we'll put a link down below to Matt Brown's video in the description to this video. So hopefully you found this helpful. If so, all the information on how you can share the video is down below in the description. And until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus. Jesus Christ and his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen. So nice to see that you've made it to the end. Before you inevitably click on another video to continue binging our glorious content, you should know about some of our other offerings. First off, some of you may know that our pirate captain is also the pastor of Kongsvinger Lutheran Church out in Oslo, Minnesota. The editor, that I totally don't have locked in my basement, produces audio and video versions of Kongsvinger sermons and Sunday schools weekly. So go check out kongsvingerchurch.org to see all of our offerings. Now, to address some of the frequently asked questions we get in the comments. (coughs) 1. The Bible and video editing software we use are named and linked in the description down below. Two, if you wish to donate to us directly so that we can keep the lights on, go check out www.piratechristian.com and hit the crew tab. 
We don't promise miraculous healings or a double increase in your finances, but what we do promise is more quality discernment from our studio into your ear holes. And three. How do you tie up with boxing gloves? Okay, who's the wiseacre who put this in here?